Hey, welcome back to the coin box. During one of my first visits to a coin shop a couple years ago, I came across a beautiful 1968 Mexican Olympic coin. It even had a deep mirror proof like finish to it. But there was just one problem. I noticed what I thought were multiple hairlines on it. I was new to collecting, but I had already been warned to steer clear of cleaned coins with hairlines. So as much as I liked it, I decided not to buy it. It wasn't until some time later when I learned about dye polishing lines that I realized that that's what I had seen on that coin, not hairlines from cleaning. And of course, now I really wish I had gotten it. So in order for you to avoid making the same mistake as I did, today we're looking at the difference between those two types of lines we often encounter on coins, dye polishing lines and hairlines. It can be tricky to know how to tell the difference between the two, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how. I have some coins I'm gonna show you, but first let's briefly go over the main differences between dye polishing lines and hairlines. Dye polishing lines are the result of a dye being cleaned or polished during the minting process. Dyes can gradually become filled with dirt and grime when they're striking coins and require cleaning. Another reason for polishing a dye could be an attempt to try and remove small blemishes or clash marks from the dye. Hairlines, on the other hand, are very fine scratches on the surface of the coin itself due to improper cleaning, and they are always a bad thing. Polishing lines are raised, not in -cuse, and that's because there's scratches into the surface of the die, which means they'll appear as raised lines on a coin struck from that die. It might require a jeweler's loop to see if the lines on the coin are raised or not. Hairlines are in -cuse, not raised. In other words, there's scratches into the surface of the coin. It's very important to note that die polishing lines are found on the fields of the coin and as a general rule do not cross over the devices on a coin since those areas are recessed or in -cuse on the die itself and aren't exposed to the polishing. Whereas hairlines are found on both the fields and the devices of a coin. Die polishing lines are often found touching the base of the devices and not only touching but are also more pronounced since that is an edge on the die and they look like they go under the inscriptions. Hairlines, on the other hand, are a result of cleaning and they often produce a halo effect around the devices and you'll see them going over the inscriptions. Dye polishing lines are usually very straight, whereas hairlines are often wispy, irregular, and curvy. I'm sure you're all very familiar with what hairlines look like, so I'll just show you this quick example of a 1989 Libertad, which I actually purchased because of this cool looking machine doubling in the lower inscriptions. I bought it online, and since the hairlines are not very harsh on this coin, they didn't show up in the photos on the listing, but you can see how these wispy hairlines are very irregular and cross over the devices, while also creating a subtle halo effect. Another fascinating difference between dye polishing lines and hairlines is that they reflect light differently. Dye polishing lines are raised and have the same original surface, or finish if you will, as the rest of the coin whereas hairlines are scratches into the surface of the coin which expose the bright raw metal underneath. Now let's look at some examples of die polishing lines. Believe it or not, this 1968 Olympic coin that looks somewhat proof-like is probably the most extreme example of die polishing lines I own. Now you may be wondering why I call this extreme and that's because I also wanted to show you how lighting can have a huge impact on the look of a coin, which is something that's useful to bear in mind. So I can change the lighting on this coin for a much more dramatic effect, like so. Well, okay, maybe not that dramatic, but here we have the same coin under different lighting. What's interesting is that each photo depicts a different byproduct of the dye being polished. The first shows the resulting proof-like look, while the second shows the scars of that polishing and either aspect can be highlighted depending on the lighting it is subjected to. If I was trying to strike a balance between both of these characteristics, this is probably the image I would go with. As I mentioned previously, these lines all run under the devices with no halo effect. And as you can see in this close-up, the lines are raised. The obverse also has that proof-like look to it, but without the dye polishing lines. It also has this cute little lamination error going on over here, which I think is pretty cool. But you know what would be even cooler is if you would take a second to subscribe to my channel. Honestly, I'd really appreciate it. Here's another pretty dramatic example where we see die polishing lines on both sides of the coin. On the obverse, we can see both vertical and horizontal lines intersecting. On this 1963 proof-like 1 peso tepalcate coin, we can imagine continuous lines under the devices that are visible even in the small gaps between tail feathers on the obverse. I also mentioned how the lines touch the base of the inscriptions as opposed to creating a halo effect. 
In this case, not only do they touch, but they actually look much more dense and abrasive directly under the inscriptions. Finally, I wanted to show you a much more subtle example, which is fairly common on Libertads from the 80s. If you have one in BU condition, you'll probably find die polish lines right around the center of the coin, usually right under the left arm and right under the wing on the other side. On 1984 Libertads, like this one, it's even more common to see this, where it looks like they got carried away a little bit, and as a result it started erasing the shallower areas of the design. Under different lighting, you can see how the design of the feathers was slightly polished away. When it comes to grading, coins with hairlines will get the dreaded details grade, while coins with die polishing lines will straight grade. I know not everyone appreciates the look of die polishing lines on coins. Maybe it's like toning, where some people like it and others simply don't care for it. Regardless, there are lots of Mexican 20th century coins that show die polishing lines. Personally, I tend to enjoy them if they aren't too harsh. I actually quite like the character they add to the coin, and I don't mind them because that's how the coin was struck but I understand if some collectors view them as either neutral or a minor negative. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and share it with a numismatic friend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.